So welcome, this is lecture 5 of uh, Mathematics for Minor Finance. Um, so what we'll do today is look at, first of all, at the local extrema, which is sort of a uh, wrap up of the uh, optimization uh, that we started with uh, last time already. Um, all that is single variable optimization so we are looking at functions which depend on a single variable on one x basically uh, so after that we are actually going on to look at more variables so we look at functions that depend on multiple uh, coordinates if you wish in x and the y say uh, and in order to uh, do optimization in multiple dimensions we um, Next, we'll go into partial derivatives first, and then we'll go into uh, optimization over two distinct variables. So that will be uh, the plan for for the for the next uh, uh, videos. But let's first have a look at uh, go back to uh, function of one variable and look at a thing which we do, did not cover that well yet, which is local extrema. So remember what we did last uh, week, we looked at this function, so any function that it will be f, that's a function on some interval i, and the question of optimization is basically the question of finding the extreme values, so finding the maximum or the minimum or both of some function, uh, and which you know, we talked about um, was important in, in various economic problems. So and what we saw there was that you would what you would typically do is you look at candidate um, values for the uh, extreme values and those candidate values included the stationary points the stationary point is a point where the derivative of this function is going to be zero uh, other candidate points are the endpoints of the interval at least if they are included in this interval i so if this i is indeed uh, closed on, 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 on that side that you're looking at and finally there might be points at which the derivative does not exist so it might be this kink in this function and that might also be a, uh, a maximum or a minimum and we looked at uh, particularly the extreme value theorem which says that if this f is indeed a continuous function, and if this interval on which f is defined, i, the domain of f essentially, if that's closed, so the endpoints are included, and bounded, so it doesn't run off to infinity, then we know for sure that f will attain its maximum and its minimum in this interval somewhere. And the way in which you could use this is we could then determine the maximum and the minimum by just looking at the candidate points, so the ones I just mentioned, evaluating the height or the value of this function at those, uh, those particular candidate points and just checking which one of these is the highest and which one is the lowest and that those will be that maximum and that minimum. We also looked at the case in which some of these conditions for this extreme value theorem were not satisfied, so perhaps because the interval is not bounded, runs up all the way to infinity, then f still might have some maximum, might have some minimum, or might have neither, we're just not completely sure, but we still we can investigate to what extent there might be maxima or minima. And we found two at Two useful rules here. So one is that an extreme value exists if the sign of the derivative, so the sign of f prime, if that changes only once from plus to minus or from minus to plus in that interval. And also if we know that this f has a stationary point, a single stationary point, and this f is a concave or convex function on i. So remember concave or convex means a either and a negative or positive second derivative of this function f. So if you have either of those satisfied, then we could still conclude, oh, here is apparently some uh, maximum or minimum, even though we cannot apply the extreme value theorem in this, uh, to this particular case. So what we're going to do today is look at perhaps at those other candidate points. So there might be multiple candidates, if you remember from this uh, uh, exploration of the extreme value theorem and one might be the maximum and another might be the minimum but you know, what about the other ones 
So the other ones might actually be local maxima or local minima. So what does it mean? A local maximum or min a local minimum means that if you look, look locally just around this particular value, so let's have as an example here, locally the point uh, C1 here, locally the function actually has a maximum. This is not the maximum of this function, clearly you see I mean, the function it takes higher values at other, other points. But if I stay close within the interval, I stay close around this C1, then within that little bit of domain around this particular point C1, we see that all other values of the function are actually below the value at C1. So at C1, we do have actually a local maximum. And similarly, at P2, we have a local maximum, which is, you know, occurs at an x value equal to C2. And finally, also at the x value b, if that's included, so if this is indeed a, a closed interval, so this, the, the boundary value b of this interval, also we see a local maximum. And, and you know, if we look a bit more closely here, of course, this local maximum is also the maximum or the global maximum that this function might have. And similarly, we would have a local minima of this function. So you can see at point a, we have a local minimum. At point uh, x equals d1, we have a local minimum, which is actually also the global minimum of this function. So this is the lowest than the actual minimum, if you wish, of this function. And finally, at point d2, we again have some minimum, which is not the total minimum, not the global minimum, but it is indeed, again, a local minimum of this function. So here I already also introduce those uh, global extreme values so global is just the opposite or the the the, uh, the more special uh, specialized version i should say of, of local so the global extreme value is always a local extreme value but not the other way around so the global one is the the real maximum so the real maximum is just here and the real minimum is just here so those are the maxima and minima that you identified last time these other ones are special too in some way. We call them local maxima and local minima. So how can we find those local extreme values, the local maxima and the local minima? Well, if we have some function, so again on some interval, let's call that i, then again the candidate points for those local extreme points, extreme values, are again this, those stationary points. So when the drifter vanishes, the endpoints of the interval, if at least this interval is closed, so the endpoints points are included. And again, also those points at which f prime is not defined, so uh, the function is not differentiable. At those points, uh, there might be a kink, those might be local minima or maxima as well. So how can we figure out if we have all those candidates, which of these are indeed local maxima or local minima? Well, the idea is, uh, well, basically we have two tests, so yeah, one is the first derivative test. So if you look at, for instance, at point x0, we see you know, graphically, you know, probably there's going to be a local maximum, right? It's not the global maximum, but there's a local maximum. But what's happening here, actually? Well, of course, it's, um, it is a uh, stationary point. And on the left-hand side, on the direct left-hand side of this stationary point, the derivative is positive, so the function is increasing. Whereas on the left hand, on the right hand side of this uh, of this point, the derivative is negative, so the function is decreasing. And of course, in the stationary point, the derivative is zero. That's why it's a stationary point. So if we have that, so if the um, derivative f prime changes sign, then we can conclude well, for this sign change, there must be a local maximum. And similarly, for this sign change there must be a local minimum. So here is a, a different kind of point. And so again, this is a stationary point. So you see the derivative here is zero. So the function is flat at the point x2. But the derivative itself doesn't change sign. So on the left-hand side, the function is increasing. f prime is bigger than zero. But it continues increasing on the right-hand side, right? So f prime is increasing again on the right-hand side of x2, just zero at the stationary point x2 itself. So this is not a local maximum or a local minimum. So you need this change of sign. And you can also look at the, uh, the boundary point. So if A is included, well, 
we don't have left hand side because that's not part of the interval but since on the right hand side of a the derivative is positive this point a this boundary point if it is included so if, uh, if the domain is, uh, is closed on that side uh, this is going to be again a local minimum likewise on the right hand side uh, this is going to be a global uh, sorry a local maximum Another test is related to uh, convexity or concavity, but now not of the whole function on the whole domain, but only regionally. So uh, remember, uh, convexity or concavity is related to the second derivative of this function. So we can, in, as a consequence, do a so-called second derivative test. So if we have some particular stationary point, which is an interior point, you know, f prime equals zero. Um, so this is again at the point, and if this f indeed is a twice differentiable function, so we can indeed take the second derivative, then we know for sure that if the second derivative at this particular point would be negative, which is the case for instance here, so we have the second derivative at x0 is negative, whereas f prime, so the first derivative is 0, right, so it's a stationary point, it's flat here. Second derivative is negative. Then we know again this point is going to be a local maximum. And likewise, at this point, the second derivative is positive. F prime itself is zero, so it's a stationary point. Well, then we know for sure this point is going to be a local minimum. And then finally, the point x2. Uh, there are Again, this is a stationary point, so f prime is zero, so locally this function is flat over here. But actually also the second derivative here is zero, and then basically we cannot say anything. So in this particular case, it's not a max, local maximum or a local minimum. That's not a general outcome, it might still be, but we cannot conclude this at least from the fact that f dot prime equals zero. So no conclusion follows there. So those are two tests. So the first one was this uh, sign tests. That's the, the first derivative changed sign. So often this is the easiest one, but not always. And the second one is this uh, second derivative tests. Uh, so we can always compute this. Uh, or usually can compute this uh, the sign of the second derivative. And if it gives us a particular sign, then we can make confident. Uh, uh, predictions or we can, we can conclude confidently that this uh, will indeed be a local max or local min but if it's not if it's zero if the second derivative is zero we don't really we cannot really conclude anything and uh, also notice that at the boundary points actually the second derivative test is not going to be of any help so to say something about boundary we really have to um, look at the first derivative like in the previous case so let's have a look at uh, an example to see uh, how this uh, works in practice. So here we have this function f of x is 1 fifth times x to the 5 plus 1 fourth times x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 7 and it's defined on some domain which is between minus 5 and 4 where minus 5 is included so it's closed on that side but 4 is not included so it's open on that side. So let's have a look. Uh, let's first uh, find the candidate points at which uh, which will be the candidates for the local extreme values of this uh, function, and then apply these two uh, these two tests. So let me do this on on paper again. So here we go. On paper, we have this uh, this function again. So the function is f x equals one fifth x to the 5 plus a quarter x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 7 and we have that the domain of this function is between minus 5, minus 5 included, so and on the right hand side we have 4 and 4 itself is excluded. So the first Question that we so we want to know what are the ex, the local extreme values of this function. So the first question that we should answer is what are the candidate points. 
points. So the candidates point will include, in particular, the stationary points of this uh, of this function. So how do we find the stationary points? Well, of course, we could just compute the derivative of this function. So what is that? Derivative of this essentially polynomial, right? So different powers uh, added up together, so it can just look term by term. So the first term, the derivative will of course be x to the fourth. The second one will be x cubed. The third one gives rise to minus two times three, so it's minus six times x squared. And the seven of course vanishes if I take the derivative. So this is the derivative, uh, and in order to figure out what you know, what are the so when is this zero? It's actually useful to factorize this. So let's do that. So of course we can factor out one x squared because the x squared is common to uh, to all of these terms. It could be the same as this. Factor that one x squared. This expression here we can still factorize because. Um, What you can see is actually the uh, quadratic here reduces to x plus 3 times x minus 2. And why is that? Well, because 3 times minus 2 indeed is minus 6. And 3 plus minus 2, or in other words, 3 minus 2, 3x minus 2x gives us this plus 1x. So sometimes, like in this case, you see that you can see this sort of fairly straightforwardly. So when these values are easy, you can easily just do this directly. If you can't see this, you can actually use the ABC formula to, to figure that out. So try that out actually for this particular case, in which we know that the the uh, the zeros of this quadratic expression in brackets here should be minus three and plus two. So you should be able to figure that out also by using the ABC formula on this quadratic formula on this uh, on this expression. So from this expression we can read off what the stationary points are. So the stationary points are x equals 0 from this one, x equals minus 3, and x equals 2. So these are the candidates and the other candidate candidate point is the well the single boundary point x equals minus 5, because minus 5 is included in the domain, so we have to look at that. 4 is also boundary, but it's not included, it's, uh, it's open on this side, so 4 is not one of the candidate points. So basically we have 4 different candidate points, 0, minus 3, 2, and minus 5, at which you would like to know, you know does this function attain a local maximum or a local minimum at this point? So let's uh, let's first do actually the uh, second derivative test now. So I'm going to take the second derivative of this function. In order to do that, so I have double prime. I could take, of course, the second derivative of this expression, but it's easier actually to go back to this expression, which is sort of easily taken the derivative of. So let's do that. First, 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12 x right so this is the second derivative so what did again what did the second derivative test tell us well look at the stationary points so it only works on the stationary points where f prime equals zero look at those three candidate points which are they x equals minus three x equals zero and x equals 2, and let's check what the station is, what the second derivative of this function is at these, uh, at these stationary points. So if you compute, so look at this function, f double prime evaluated at minus 3, how much is that? It's 4 times minus 3 cubed, so that's 4 times minus 27 plus 3 times minus 3 squared so it's plus 3 times 9 plus 27 minus 12 times minus 3 so plus 36 let me just write it here 4 times 27 
So minus four times 27, I should say, because minus three cubed is minus 27. Plus 27, second bit, plus 36. How much is it? A minus 4 times 27 plus 27 is minus 3 times 27, so it's minus 81 plus 36 equals minus 45, a negative. So that's the first one. The second one is easier, unfortunately, so I'm just plugging in x equals 0, you see that all these three terms vanishes. f prime and 0 is actually 0, that's fast. And finally, that's what we have. Of course, x equals 2. f double prime at 2 is 4 times 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8, right? So 4 times 8, 32. Plus 3 times 4, that's 12. Minus 12 times 2, minus 24. And that, I guess, 20 is positive. So what do we conclude? From the second derivative test, at x equals minus 3, which is one of the stationary points, the second derivative is actually minus 45, so locally this function is concave, so we have a local maximum. At x equals 2, we have uh, a positive second derivative, so the function there is locally convex. Uh, it's, it's stationary, so that means we have a local min. At the point x equals 0, second derivative is 0, so basically we cannot conclude. So no conclusions for the, uh, for the other points, so no conclusion for x equals 0, and of course also no conclusion because this test doesn't apply to the boundary point. So x equals minus 1. So we know two, we know one local maximum, basically and one local minimum at minus 3 and 2, but we're still unsure about the other two candidate, candidate points, x equals 0 and x equals minus 1. So let's now then look at um, this other test, the sign test. So does actually the derivative change sign at that particular at those particular po uh, points? Well, in order to check that, sign test. Let's draw a sign diagram for for f. Sorry for f prime. We have to look at changes in the sign of the derivative. So the special points here are first of all minus five, right? That's a boundary point. Then we have minus 3, which is a stationary point. We have 0, which is a stationary point. And we have plus 2, which is a stationary point. And 4 is not included because this interval, as you remember, was open. So let's have a look at, uh, at the uh, derivative. So let's look at this factorized form of the derivative. So First factor x squared, that's of course going to be 0 and 0. For all other values of x, of course x squared is going to be positive, right? So this will be the diagram. Secondly, at x equals minus 3, then this uh, point here, or this factor here is going to be 0. So of course uh, x minus 3 factor, sorry, x plus 3 factor is going to be 0 and minus 3. The left-hand side of minus 3 is going to be negative, and on the right-hand side is going to be positive. And finally, for x equals 2, the factor x minus 2 is going to be 0. The left-hand side is going to be negative. On the right-hand side is going to be positive. So what can we say for the f prime, for the uh, derivative itself? Here on the left hand side of minus 3, we have a positive times a negative times a negative, so it's going to be positive. The term 0, of course, at x equals minus 3. And in this domain here, we have a plus times a plus times a minus, so that's a minus. At 0, it goes to 0. In this area between 0 and 2, we have a plus times a plus times a minus. 
is going to make a minus 0 here and plus 4. So we can actually see what's happening with this function. This function is, has a positive derivative everywhere to the left of minus 3. So let's keep increasing over there. It's then decreasing in the next bit. It turns flat here, but it's flat here, of course. It turns flat here as well, but then again, it keeps on decreasing at itself. Then it's flat again, the derivative is 0 at plus 2, and then it starts increasing but because here the derivative is positive. So now we can conclude. Um, we can verify that we were correct actually uh, about x equals minus 3. Uh, because the uh, the derivative changes sign from plus to minus, so indeed this was the local maximum. X equals zero. You can now have a look. We see the uh, derivative does not change sign, so it's not a local, not a local extremum. At x equals 2, the function is has a negative derivative on the left hand side, turns to positive derivative on the right hand side, so it's a local minimum. And the final point is boundary point minus 5. At minus 5, this function is actually increasing on the, on the right hand side. So um, this is going to be uh, a local minimum. So, and this completes the evaluation of the local extreme points of this function f of x. So let's go back to the slide then. So here again, this is the derivative that we computed, and we find those uh, four uh, candidate points. We first did the second derivative test, so I again computed here the uh, second derivative uh, expression for this function f, and uh, we also had a look at uh, what does this second derivative evaluate to at the stationary point. So remember, again, not the end point. There's, we cannot use this test, basically. And we came up with conclusions about the point x equals minus 3 and x equals 2, where the local maximum and the local minimum, whereas for x equals 0, the second derivative equals 0, so we could not draw any conclusions there. And also not for the end point, of course, minus 5. So then we did this uh, sign test for the uh, first derivative. Uh, so we drew this sign diagram like here. Uh, and that allowed us actually to also say something about the x equals minus 5, where there's indeed a local minimum. Because the function is increasing uh, from this boundary onwards. Uh, and also the point x equals 0, we could conclude, well, there is neither a local maximum or a local minimum because this function is decreasing on either side of this, of this particular point. So the next little bit that uh, I'd like to uh, discuss, and which is actually in your book um, in chapter 8.7, um, is inflection points. So an inflection point is, can only be defined for functions which are twice differentiable, so we can compute the second, uh, the second uh, derivative of this, of this function. And it is defined, so this inflection point is defined as the point, as a point, in which the uh, function changes from a convex function, a convex, locally convex, so you have a hollow in this sense, convex, to a concave function, which is bulging in this sense. So where, where is this change occurring? It's exactly at this point P, which is called the, uh, the inflection point. And similarly here, we have the change from a concave function, function is concave on this side, to a convex function, function is convex on that uh, right-hand side of P. So that's what an inflection point um, is. So how would we find those? Well, an inflection point is the point at which the function changes from convex into concave or vice versa. So basically, what does this mean? It tells us it's the point at which, at which the second derivative changes from plus to minus, 
like here, or from minus to plus like here. So the point at which the, der the second derivative is zero, and indeed the sign of the second derivative changes, that would be uh, one of those inflection points. So that's basically the definition. So I'm not going to go too deeply into that now, but you can actually try for yourself for this uh, simple function. So we have some function f of x, x to the 6 minus 10 times x to the 4th, defined for all x smaller than 1. And if you um, are asked to determine the inflection points of this function, what should you do? Well, first you would have to find the second derivative. And in order to do that, the first thing you do is find the first derivative, obviously. Then you determine the roots of the second derivative, so that's nothing else but finding out for which x is the second derivative equal to 0. Then draw the diagram, the sign diagram for the second derivative, so that you can check uh, whether at these roots or at these zeros of the second derivative, the second derivative actually changes sign. And if they do, well, uh, then you are looking at an inflection point. So try this out and look at the the uh, answer at the end of the slide uh, back or in the book. So that's the uh, first bit. So next uh, part, next video will be about functions of more variables. So instead of having just an f of x, we're going to have a look at a function which is an f of x and y perhaps.